Panamera is a luxury five-door sports car that in S-hybrid form is targeted at a very unique kind of customer. If you can afford one, then the idea of a four-seat, 168-mile-an-hour Porsche that returns over 41 miles to the gallon and emits just 159 grams per kilometre of carbon dioxide may be tempting indeed. This is a car like no other. It took Porsche a long time to get around to bringing us a Gran Turismo four-seater, this car, the Panamera. But since its launch in 2009, a ready band of buyers around the world have found it very well worth waiting for. A typical 911 purchaser might venture from the driveway little more often than on high days and holidays, but Panamera people use their cars extensively with typical annual mileages of over 18,500 miles. For these customers, this Porsche is a business tool that must make sense on the bottom line, a requirement the Stuttgart brand always promised to better serve as this model's lineup developed. First, conventionally with a three litre V6 diesel and unconventionally with the variant we're gonna look at here, the most economical Porsche of all time, the Panamera S Hybrid. Its designers claim this to be the most efficient car you can buy. Yes, really. You might find that difficult to credit, given that we're talking here of a two-ton grand touring sports car powered by a three-litre supercharged V6 petrol engine and capable of nearly 170 miles an hour. But it's just a case of adjusting your frame of reference. Consider this question from the point of view of how much horsepower your car produces for every uh, gram of CO2 it emits, and the results you'd expect are turned on their head. An apparently eco-conscious model like, for example, Toyota's Prius Hybrid uh, puts out 98 brake horsepower and emits 89 grams per kilometre of CO2. That's just 1.1 brake horsepower per gram per kilometre. Now, this Panamera Hybrid, in contrast, puts out 380 brake horsepower, yet it's able to uh, produce a CO2 return of just 159 grams per kilometre. Now that means that its engine is being worked for an impressive 2.4 brake horsepower for every gram of carbon dioxide it emits. And on that basis, this car is unchallenged as the most efficient production model available to British buyers. And we're going to test it. So, what exactly do we have here? Well, essentially, uh, pretty much the same recipe that the brand also offers with its KNS Hybrid Luxury SUV, a Volkswagen Group sourced supercharged 3 litre V6 petrol unit matched with a 34 kilowatt electric motor, creating a total combined output of 380 brake horsepower. Though in this case, it's matched to two rather than four driven wheels. Unlike, say, Honda's hybrid models, which use a constantly changing combination of petrol and electric power, this one uses a parallel hybrid approach. Which means that if necessary, both power sources can work separately from each other. And at certain times with this Panamera, they do. As for example, when you're starting off. Provided the battery's fully charged, it's not too cold, and you're gentle with the throttle, most of the time when you pull away, you'll be under electric power alone. Provided you don't ram down the accelerator or exceed 53 miles an hour, uh, then you'll stay that way for up to 1.2 miles, especially if you engage the e-power mode via this button here that uh, regulates the torque available and uh, also smooths out the power delivery. That means that if, for example, you're heading out of an underground car park into a city, uh, you might be approaching the city limits before the engine cuts in at all. It does so imperceptibly as the horizon powers towards you. A combined petrol and electric motor torque figure of 580 newton meters, guaranteeing brawny acceleration especially if you press this sport button. 
so equipped, your Panamera S Hybrid will uh, flash to 60 from rest in six seconds dead. The rear spoiler uh, perking up at around 55 miles an hour as it goes. Um, and it'll go to a, an even higher plane if, you, uh, if you're brave enough to approach the 167 mile an hour top speed. Perhaps a more telling figure is the 3.9 seconds. Uh, that's all that's required to accomplish the 50 to 75 mile an hour overtaking increment. Very little on the road can stay with this car. All these figures are essentially the same as those you'd achieve in a conventionally engined 4.8 litre V8 petrol powered Panamera S. Uh, but the downside with that particular car is a combined cycle fuel return of not much more than 20 miles to the gallon and a CO2 emissions figure approaching 300 grams per kilometre. So how on earth can this hybrid S Panamera model uh, nearly double that fuel return while uh, nearly halving the emissions figure at the same time as shrugging off a significant weight penalty to produce almost the same kind of performance? Well, one answer lies in its ability to uh, well, what Porsche call sail or coast when the engine isn't required, say when you're cruising on the motorway or when you're uh, going down a, a steepish descent. Now at these times the engine will automatically be disengaged but can be uh, automatically fired again at a moment's notice if a prod on the throttle suggests that its assistance is required. As you drive you can monitor what's driving or being driven by what via a hybrid energy flow diagram on the dash which shows with uh, orange arrows if you're being driven by the engine, with blue arrows if you're being driven by the battery, or with green arrows if you're lifting off and recharging the battery up to uh, its full potential. Now throughout all this, drive switches imperceptibly between the eight ratios of the Tiptronic S uh, um, automatic gearbox that all Panamera S hybrid customers must have. It uh, can also be operated via these uh, steering wheel paddles which are a joy to use, particularly on the kind of twisting country roads on which you'll experience the excellence of the Servotronic power steering. Now it's here you'll also appreciate the uh, adaptive air suspension borrowed from the top turbo model that uh, keeps the car's composure level regardless of the load distribution. It uh, uh, creates, as you'd expect, a magic carpet ride. For bumpier roads, you can use this button here to raise the ride height by up to 25 millimeters to reduce the risk of grounding. And the system will work in conjunction with uh, the PASM Porsche Active Suspension Management System, uh, which is an electronic damping control setup, enabling you to vary the ride between three settings, Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus. Now the driver orientated Sport Plus option is particularly clever. Um, selecting it automatically lowers the car by 25 millimeters and stiffens the whole thing up substantially. Time softens acceptance of the most extreme designs. And this one's found gradually a more widespread following in its time on the market. It's certainly bold in concept High performance luxury sporting cars of this kind, after all, are supposed to be saloons. This one's a five door. They're supposed to have five seats. This one has four. As for the styling, well, shut your eyes and imagine what a four door Porsche 911 sports car might look like, and you'll not be a million miles away from the reality of this Panamera. Boot space too is inevitably affected by all the batteries that have to be stored under the luggage compartment floor. The 337 litre total capacity, 108 litres down on that which you'd get in a conventionally engined Panamera 4.8 V8S. The seats folded figure in this S hybrid model is 1155 litres. Now, this dividing centre console extends right to the back of the car, firmly defining this model as a four-seater 
and enabling the designers to create uh, purpose-built sports chairs here at the back rather than uh, the usual indented bench upon which at higher cornering speeds occupants would quickly be rolling about. Now uh, these chairs also offer uh, really surprising standards of uh, knee, head and leg room uh, for something professing to be a four-door sports car. It's really not that far off the standards you'd expect in a luxury saloon like a BMW 7 Series or a Mercedes S-Class. And it's nice that the chairs have been positioned slightly more centrally than those up front, giving rear seat occupants a really good view of the action going on ahead. Now, you'll need a budget stretching to the best part of £90,000 uh, once you've allowed for a few well-chosen extras if you're to own this Panamera in S-hybrid form. Now, that means uh, a premium of around £9,000 over the uh, conventionally engined 4.8 V8 S Panamera you'd need to match this car's performance, and you're looking at paying a premium of around £25,000 over the Panamera diesel variant you'd need to match this car's efficient running costs. For the same kind of £90,000 budget you could buy yourself a luxury hybrid like a Lexus LS600H but that's a soft syrupy luxury saloon um, and much the same applies to other obvious German rivals like the Mercedes S400 hybrid, the Audi A8 hybrid or the BMW 7 Series Active Hybrid. At the end of the day, there really is nothing quite like this Panamera. Where are the eco-conscious four-door coupe models priced in this bracket? Maserati don't make a Quattroporte of this type, and the Aston Martin Rapide is far thirstier and pricier. No, to find any kind of comparable competitor to this Panamera, you'd have to sacrifice some performance and venture down market settling for diesel power. And even if you do that, the most comparable car I can think of, Mercedes CLS four-door sporting coupe, uh, in diesel form can't match this Porsche's fuel economy and it certainly can't get close to its emissions figure. And the same is true of other potential rivals in that bracket like Audi's A7 Sportback or the BMW 5 Series GT. As you'd expect for this kind of money, most of the kit items you'll want are included as standard. So you can expect to find things like bison on headlamps, uh, front and rear park assist, tyre pressure monitoring, 19 inch alloy wheels, adaptive air suspension with PASM Porsche Active Suspension Management, uh, an auto dimming rear view mirror, the Porsche Communication Management System, which gives you a sophisticated sat-nav and a high-quality audio system, and cruise control. And believe it or not, you get a rear wiper. Yes, uh, that really is optional on cheaper Panamera models. Uh, the only couple of additions on this particular version are this rear privacy glass and brushed aluminium trim. With this car to be mine, I'd also want to have specified the 14-speaker, 545-watt Bose surround sound system. Safety-wise, there are endless electronic aids to help you keep all that power in check, including PSM, the best stability control management system in the business. Should all else fail and you can't avoid an accident, then no fewer than eight airbags will spring to your aid a lane change uh, assist system that warns you of uh, potential drivers in your blind spot when you're pulling out to overtake, well, that's optional. As with all Panameras, this one gets a sophisticated vehicle tracking system and you've got uh, a very high quality alarm to Thatcham Category 5. And new owners will get a course at the Porsche Experience Centre at Silverstone to help them understand their car's lofty capabilities. As clever as it is, one suspects that Porsche has built the Panamera S Hybrid largely because it can and because it represents a clever piece of public relations to have this model in the lineup. Nevertheless, though few will be sold, there will be some for whom uh, this model will be manna from heaven. And what will they be paying to keep it on the road? Impressively little, as it turns out. 
though the tax breaks in the UK aren't anything like as advantageous as in some other countries. In the States, for example, uh, owning this Panamera hybrid will uh, save its uh, buyer around $2,200 a year in tax reductions. Still, this model's 159 grams per kilometre CO2 return. That's uh, 13 grams per kilometre better than the Panamera diesel, providing you specify low rolling resistance tyres. Enables this uh, S-hybrid variant to dip just under the 160 gram per kilometre threshold for company write-down uh, allowance. And that means that as a company purchase, uh, you could reclaim the price against tax at the rate of 20% per annum. There are other uh, uh, tax advantages in opting for a hybrid, of course, um, potentially lower servicing costs, and in some cities you'll get cheaper parking and uh, you'll be rid of the congestion charge. But none of this is really enough to offset the £25,000 premium that you'll pay for ownership of this car over a Panamera diesel. That car returns pretty much the same kind of performance at the pumps as this one. Uh, you'll get 41.5 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle from a Panamera S hybrid. Um, to put that in perspective, it's about the same kind of return that you get from a 1.6 litre petrol Ford Mondeo. Uh, or to put it in better perspective against a, a more comparable car, take uh, a Mercedes CLS 350 CDI diesel for example, um, that car returns 37.2 miles to the gallon. But of course not all potential buyers of this car will be judging it against diesel alternatives. Uh, this hybrid variant is after all only £9,000 more than an equivalent Panamera 4.8 V8S. Um, that's uh, a car with equivalent performance. Uh, but it puts out twice as much in terms of CO2 and goes half as far on every gallon, leading to tax break and running cost advantages for this hybrid that would shrink the price difference between the two models pretty quickly. And best of all, you can judge just how eco-friendly you're being via this central display, which shows exactly what's being driven by what and exactly how far you're going on electric power. There's even a separate hybrid zero emissions graphical display which will show you exactly uh, how far you've gone in terms of time in uh, zero emissions electric mode since you started off. Now you won't be buying any £90,000 motor car on economic grounds, least of all this one. If you simply want a more cost effective way to run a Panamera then the diesel version provides it for around £25,000 less. It can't match this S hybrid model's performance though, or its exemplary refinement or high-tech appeal. In other countries, notably the US market this car is primarily designed for, uh, these are nice to have advantages to group alongside this model's main selling point, notably the substantial tax breaks available to customers opting for hybrid power. Those aren't yet as attractive here, which will inevitably limit this car's appeal. But it remains a devastatingly effective statement of its brand's technological know-how. A glimpse into the future of just how efficient uh, powerful luxury sports cars can be. Porsche style. <laughs>